Hello everyone. And in this tutorial, we'll take a look at how to create an ocean shader. So this is not a full, uh, this is not a full tutorial on how to simulate an ocean and you know, all of those things. We're just going to take a look at uh, how to build an ocean shader in Octane and Redshift. So I'll cover both. So I'll cover Redshift first and I'll co cover Octane second. Uh, this is the final result, but this is purely from Octane. So what I've done here is that the ocean is looped. So you get like a proper loop, which is also an option that is available within the ocean tools itself. So this is what we're essentially going to take a look at. So before we uh, start with the shader building, uh, let's just take a look at the basic setup. Okay, so what I have is essentially three things. I have my little teapot over there and then I have the ocean and I have a grid below it. Okay, now I'll explain why we need the grid because it is kind of important, but let's take a look at the ocean first. So the way the ocean works is uh, like if you just want to render an ocean, like you're not, you don't really want to do a simulation or anything then what you need is you need a basic grid. Okay, so you need a basic grid, you need something called ocean evaluate, and you need something called as an ocean spectrum. So the ocean spectrum generates uh, the ocean displacement. Okay, so if you connect uh, the grid in the first input, in the left input, and the ocean spectrum in the right, and you'll get, you'll get this. Okay, so you'll get, uh, it's it's all automatically animated. You don't need to do anything with it. So what you need is uh, firstly, just increase the size of this to let's say about 30 by 30. And then increase the uh, rows and columns. So I'll take it about 200 by 200. So we'll at least see something. And if you press play, you'll be able to see the ocean. So this is actually a really, really good, uh, you know, animated ocean if you've never used it before. And you have some, I won't go through the options of this, but you have like basic options, like you have the resolution of the ocean. Like if you go too low, you know, then there's nothing. So usually I keep it at 10. You can define the size of the ocean. Okay. Like how, and the higher the resolution goes, the slower this gets, you know, so like at seven, you'll notice it calculates a lot faster. And as you go higher, it'll keep getting slower. And then here you have the option for looping. So if I say loop over time and I make it say five seconds, then you'll notice that it will loop. So which is very nice if you want to create like a looped animation, like you want to create GIFs or something, see, so it loops. Okay, so this is, this is basically how you create an ocean. Okay, so what I have here is I have uh, something that is about 700 by 700 segments. So it's pretty high resolution. Now, along with that, what I wanted to do was uh, I have my teapot and my, uh, the teapot with the life boy, and this needs to float on the ocean. So what I did is I duplicated the grid and I gave it just a hundred by hundred. So it's the same ocean spectrum, except it's just very low resolution. The reason for this is that, uh, if you copy something onto the ocean and it is relatively high resolution, you get a lot of movement in, you know, in every direction because it's calculating normals. So since the ocean is extremely like detailed, you'll get the object, you know, like just moving very randomly. So what you can do is you create a lower resolution ocean. Uh, so then the movement won't be as, it will still follow the movement, but it won't be as uh, violently shaking as it would if you, if you use like this grid. Now, the second thing I did here was I put in a sort so I can specify where the zero will start from. Okay. And the reason for doing that is so that if the zero is fixed, then I can just select the zero point number and copy the teapot there. Okay, rather than trying to find where I want it, I just move the sort around and that will automatically place my teapot. Okay, so the second thing I've done is, so, so I have this, and then in the transform, I kind of moved it a little up and scaled it down. 
So like make made it slightly flatter. Okay, and gave it a little more smoothness. So it's fairly smooth. Okay, and then you copy the teapot onto that. So you can see it moves, but it's not as you know jittery. So like if you the higher this grid count goes, the more it will sort of violently start to shake. And then I gave it another transform just to sort of, you know, so I can adjust the height a little bit more. So this goes out to a separate uh, geometry folder and this is my main ocean. So if I uh, see both of them, there you go. You know, this kind of, it moves with the ocean, but it doesn't like shake too much. So even if you want to copy like a boat or something, this is the way you can do it. Like if you just want it static in one place, okay, which is basically what I wanted. Okay, so this is, this is it. Like this is what I want. And I just have a camera. So uh, let's get started.